now we turn to our first ward race here in the city of Dubuque. In the studio with me, I have John Pregler. And hi, John. Hello. Thanks well, for having me. Thanks for coming on. Well, John, let's talk a little bit about who is John Pregler. Well, I'm a lifelong Dubuquer, born and raised. I have uh, been working in Dubuque uh, uh, all my life as well. Uh, I take a great interest in Dubuque history and have a tremendous passion for Dubuque history, uh, going back to before our founding as a city. Uh, so I have a lot of knowledge about the, the city's past uh, that I uh, like to honor and promote and discuss and bring forward. Uh, I love where we're at in our present and I have tremendous optimism for our future. I live here in Dubuque in First Ward, as you had indicated, on Pagel Court with my beautiful wife, Cheryl, and our puppy dog, Sophie. And uh, I decided to run for city council uh, because I've been serving on the Long Range Planning Advisory Commission since 2010. And the Long Range Planning Advisory Commission sees all the capital projects uh, that come before the city, and we review all the annual budgets. And part of my professional career is working with local, state, and federal government agencies and helping them develop capital budgets, operating budgets, uh, work plans, aligning their limited resources uh, with their many priorities and many projects that they have on the books to help balance that uh, limited resource with the needs of the community. And in the last uh, uh, five to six years, what I've seen with the escalation of our city debt, raising it up to almost $300 million for a community of about 58,000 uh, and 90% of our max debt limit, uh, is that uh, we need to pull back the reins a little bit. In our personal lives and in our business lives, uh, we do not continue to invest uh, when we're deep in debt. At some point, prudent investments, we need to take a step back and let the investments work for us. And I believe Dubuque's really at that point. So one of the things that I'm championing is uh, to help bring down the city debt uh, to uh, the 24% limit uh, that the city council has identified over the next nine years. But the concern I have is that's not going to be possible without raising taxes if we proceed with the Arts and Cultural Master Plan, the Chaplin Schmidt Island Master Plan, the Southport Master Plan. Uh, once the Southwest Arterial is done, we're going to want to annex most of that and we're going to want to develop all of that. All that's going to cost money and require additional borrowing. Uh, Besides that, Southport and Flex Deal have contamination issues that are going to need to be cleaned up that are going to probably cost uh, potentially in the tens of millions of dollars before we can even get to a point that we can start developing those. So I would like to start prioritizing uh, the different projects that we have coming forth. Well, what made you decide to jump in the rain? It sounds like you've got a lot of analysis of some stuff that's going on here in town, right. but what made you, you know, go over the edge and say, you know what, I think I'd be good at this. Uh, my love for Dubuque and my experience professionally. Uh, I love my job. I love working with communities. Uh, I work with communities all over the United States. Well, what so, do you do? Uh, I'm a consultant. Uh, in the infrastructure management arena. Okay. So I work for a company out of Orlando, Florida. I work out of my home here in Dubuque. Uh, and so what we do is we go into government agencies and we help them uh, inventory their infrastructure, determine their condition levels, and develop maintenance plans uh, and capital plans to be able to align their limited resources to maintain those projects uh, or those infrastructure uh, and nothing is sustainable if it is not financially sustainable and we're at a point where we need to kind of pull back the reins like I said and let our current investments do some work while we reprioritize. Challenges and, and you talked about this reprioritization it sounds like that's maybe going to be one of our biggest challenges facing us ahead or are there other things that, that you've identified? Uh, well, definitely the budget is going to be a challenge. Uh, uh, two other issues that I'm very passionate about and are part of my campaign are dealing with crime and safety and mental health. Uh, from a mental health perspective, uh, when the question's asked, what can we do about mental illness and Dubuque and mental health, oftentimes people tie it directly to crime. Uh, and it's not necessarily tied to crime, but there is an element uh, that, that touches crime. 
So we need to start looking at, especially in light of the announcement yesterday that the Crescent Community Center is going to be losing federal funding, uh, we need to find ways that we can reach out and help those with mental illness in the city of Dubuque. And where mental illness touches crime is oftentimes uh, people who have mental illness, uh, they'll come into contact with the police. And in my conversations with over 20 law enforcement officers here in the city of Dubuque, it's my understanding that none have had in-depth professional training on how to deal or recognize mental health issues. Dubuque does not have a staff person that they can turn to in the police department, a uh, professional uh, uh, PhD to get help when needed, uh, nor do we have a center that we can guide people towards to get the mental health they need. So oftentimes what happens is we arrest these individuals and now they have a record. And now it makes it challenging for them to uh, get uh, 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 housing, to get jobs, because now they have a record. And it's not because they're criminals, it's because they don't have access to mental health. Uh, so I'd like to address uh, both those aspects from getting the police the training they need so we're not uh, uh, handicapping these individuals by arresting them uh, and also address the need to have a facility in which people can get the mental health care they need. There was an issue, and I, and I think the local paper came out and, and didn't think that you should be concerned about fire stations. Correct. I think that's kind of a big deal, don't you? Oh, absolutely. And as Ms. Larson just uh, uh, mentioned, Chief Dulcing thinks the West End needs a, a police substation. Well, the West End most definitely needs a fire station. And my concern is not fires. My concern is uh, EMS medical mm -hmm. services. Dubuque only has two ambulances. We need a third or a, a firehouse in the West End that can house a third ambulance and paramedic squad. Uh, Right now, our average response time for EMS calls in the city of Dubuque is about eight and a half minutes, which on a national average is pretty good. But when I talk to the firemen in Dubuque, that average is high primarily because of the runs out into the West End because there isn't a fire station deeper into the first ward. So if we built a firehouse in the first ward with an ambulance, I think our response times average-wise will come dramatically down because if you look at uh, all the other wards besides Ward 1, the response times are much lower than our city average. Well, it, which gets me kind of to this, it's kind of the, you know, six of one, half dozen of another. If you have more residents, again, you can get more of these projects done. But when you add those residents, you have to provide the services. How, how do you juggle that? Well, that, that's a very uh, a tough uh, challenge. And part of the issue is uh, we're growing the land mass of the city larger than our population is growing. So we're spreading our resources very thin. Uh, it's longer response times, more roadways we need to manage, uh, uh, more uh, staff we potentially need to cover all those areas, or we have to accept that our response times are going to increase uh, over time as we have development in the south part of town or on the far west end. For projects, um, are there any challenges? Um, and Kate talked about hers, you know, the north end, kind of getting that back on the map. What about the first ward? What what challenges are in your ward? Well, definitely the, the whole fire station right. issue is one of them. The other uh, topic or issue that I've been running on uh, related to Ward 1 primarily is public transportation. Mm -hmm. And that really touches on two areas. Uh, the first is pedestrian traffic. Uh, everybody has experience driving by High V on Dodge and seeing someone trying to cross Dodge Street Good luck, uh, who right? lives behind the mall. <laughs> it's like playing the game Frogger. Yep. Uh, and the same is true on JFK, uh, as well as the Northwest Arterial, especially around Pennsylvania, where we have kids crossing to either go uh, uh, to, to junior high or crossing the other way to go to high school. Uh, so it's very much a, a matter of public safety. The other aspect of public transportation I'd like to address on the, the West End and in Ward 1 uh, is senior transportation. Uh, we have four uh, uh, senior residential uh, facilities in the West End. Uh, they do capitalize on the Jewel as well as the Do Ride programs, but there are needs uh, that the city can address further. 
Uh, I've heard uh, individuals say they'd like to see nighttime ridership. As we all know, as we get older, our eyesight starts to dwindle, our reaction time starts to slow down, and that's very true at night. So a lot of seniors don't like to drive at night, and they would like bus, bus services to go downtown to be able to go to the Grand for a play or to the Millworks District uh, for an event or whatever the case may be. So I think the city can do more uh, with on-demand type of travel, uh, especially related to our senior citizens. All righty. Well, just a, a few moments left, of course, but uh, John, why should someone vote for you? Why, why check that, that box off next to, next to your name? One, because I'm passionate and in love with the city of Dubuque. Uh, number two, because I have a, a wealth of experience working with government, uh, seeing what works in other communities around the United States and what does not, and being able to compare and contrast that to what will work in Dubuque will be a huge benefit to the city council, I believe. All righty. Well, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you very much, and everybody have a happy Halloween. All righty. And again, folks, that was John Pregler. John is running for the First Ward Council seat. Also, before John, we were talking with Kate Larson. Kate is running for the Third Ward seat. And folks, we will be having other council candidates on through the rest of the week here as well, so stay tuned for that. But coming up on tomorrow's show, we'll take a little break from that. We'll be talking with Iowa Senator Joni Ernst, as well as talking with Major Kay Mason and Tom Stecker about the kickoff of the uh, annual Salvation Army Drive. Lots of bell ringers hitting the streets fairly soon. Folks, as always, join me right here, 1230 Monday through Friday.